Hi guys, we're back on the Big Tech Show. My name is Benjamin, and today I'll be speaking with the founder and CEO of TMAP, one of the biggest fintechs in the country right now. Guess what we're going to be talking about today? The rise of fintechs. Come with me. So over the years, We've had an influx of fintech companies that have come into Nigeria trying to do financial inclusion, both for the underserved and the already served, which are the people that are banked. On today's episode of the show, I have with me the CEO of Team Apt, one of the biggest companies doing just that. Right? They have two products that are serving the underserved, another one serving the banked people. Welcome to the show, Tosin. It's a pleasure to have you back. Thanks, man. Um, it's a pleasure, exactly all mine. It's good to see you again. Yes, it's good to see you. I remember in 2018, we were up in your office, yes. and then now we're in a more relaxed spot. Yes, actually. And that was when we were more or less pivoting in yeah. this direction. And today, I'm happy to have you. Okay, thank you, thank you. So for the benefit of everybody watching, um, can you just tell us you know, what TeamApp is and the origin story? Yeah, TeamApp, we're a financial technology provider. Okay. We founded in 2015. Okay. Uh, we initially started our businesses, uh, business by servicing banks. Yeah. Right. We were like a digital banking service provider. Right. Essentially, most of the banks relied on us to build one or more solution or the other, like mobile apps, web mm -hmm. apps, mm -hmm. you know. And we service all the banks actually. So we're growing, we're having a good business. Uh, but one day we just thought to ourselves that, guys, we need to stick to our mission. Right. And our mission is providing financial happiness. Sounds like almost <laughs> <laughs> grandiose. Yes. Yeah. Uh, almost, uh, you know, noble. Uh, secondly, we're also looking for bigger markets. That was a commercial drive. So okay. sometimes in 2019, uh, we pivoted okay. uh, from being a tech provider for banks to now servicing people through agents and uh also merchants also okay and here we are today having money points and also monify through our banks yes i've heard of monify but we'll come to that that's like the big point of this show right <laughs> <laughs> um so when you just backtrack a little bit to putting the team together right you know how did you decide on who to tap right um you know according to the public available information team mm -hmm. after 2015 mm -hmm. right so when you were starting out, how did you really pull all the bricks together? Yeah, I, I think this is usually one of the hardest parts, right? Uh, sometimes I liken it to a rocket taking off, okay. right? You know, once the hardest part of times is those initial few That's seconds it, of yes. takeoff, right? Having a founding team is very, very important. Okay. Uh, the first problem you usually face is nobody knows you, especially if you're a new founder. Yeah, so you trust will be hard. Right? Yeah. You do probably don't have enough money to pay them market rates or better. Yes. So you probably this 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 time is often a good test of your creativity as, a, as an entrepreneur. Right. Uh, I will usually advise when you're starting up to find a few, perhaps younger, especially if you're a first-time founder, mm. younger smart guys who are still hungry. That's a very interesting point. But yeah. Okay. Exactly. Uh, younger smart guys means that they can still take risks mm -hmm. and when you take such risks it's not necessarily going to affect your career as a younger person mm. so they can always imagine okay i can do this for one or two years yeah if it doesn't work i move on yes now your own ability now as a founder which is as a leader mm -hmm. to now quickly prove in the next few months or next one year that there's there is a future in this thing is now very pivotal. Now, I will not lie that there's luck there. Yes. <laughs> if any founder comes here, any entrepreneur, and says that there's no luck in business, they're lying. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, but if time favors you, chance favors you, and you put in the work, and you can quickly demonstrate traction in a couple of months yeah. plus, you have a very, very high chance of retaining these initial rock stars 
that you manage to pitch to. So how do you attract rock stars in the first place? One of the best places is where you work. Okay. Right? You often already know them. Yes. This guy is a bad guy, this guy is a bad guy. And if you are also the right person, maybe you have the right charisma, technical skills, they also believe in you, most they will take a chance on you. And that's actually how I found my initial founding team. That's that's explosive. I enjoy that. Thank you. <laughs> and I think for some other people it's also like maybe university. Yes. Um, you know, people you were in school with. Absolutely. And, but if you are a first time founder that is maybe older in your yes. career, you've worked in a couple of places. Yes. So that, that's and that's another point to make. Uh, was, yes, university is also part of in fact part of my founding team included people I met in the in university the uni, also. Yes. But one of the mistakes that people also make is not having enough industry experience before a startup. Yes. Uh, I reasoned to myself that I mean I've been an entrepreneur and most entrepreneurs have always historically been entrepreneurs, right? I reasoned to myself then that if you want to enter an industry that is quite matured, like has an age, yeah. you need to get up to the state of the art. Mm. Getting to state of the art means that you should work in a place or at least learn the state of the art, right? Yeah. So, and I'm looking around to some of our favorite startups that you know are doing quite well, yes. and most of them are not. They are all experienced guys before they started, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. from GB to Shola yeah. to uh, some of my other friends in this same industry. Yes. GB is the nickname of the Flutter Wave founder and CEO. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, like they've all worked in interesting places where they learn about problems first hand, customer behavior the industry regulation yeah. these are all things that you need to quickly figure out for you to have initial traction very quickly so um wh while it's very good especially because we have stories of people like mark Zuckerberg, yeah. <laughs> bill gates that probably did not finish school right yes uh the more reality is some of these founders are actually quite you know experienced in not like experience but at least have some industry knowledge yes. yeah and I've seen a research that backs up the right. claim that you know 30 plus founders mm -hmm. tend to do better than 20 plus founders. Absolutely. Um, let's go into that um, banking and fintech space. Mm -hmm. um, something you said, just even put into context why you decided to go the route of servicing banks. I think that was your way of proving um, traction early. Yes, yes. Because some people that were founded in 2015 decided yes. to go the consumer route. That's and right. Pay stack, mm -hmm. as well. um, but let's even speak about banks and fintechs right you know what are the points of collaboration what are the points of competition right you know and you know how do you see that evolving hmm. fundamentally banks and fintechs differ in the single ability to take deposits okay. and give loans okay um however in terms of providing financial services uh, the central bank has licensed fintechs to provide financial services Okay. Uh, either payment, payment agency, yes. uh, switching, etc. Yes. So first of all, that fundamental difference means that there's a subset of financial services that fintechs can never touch unless you're a bank. Mm -hmm. Ability to take deposits and ability to give loans. Uh, so because ultimately every payment that you do as a fintech is going to be stored eventually as money. It means that a fintech needs a bank. Yes. And that is one of the first points of cooperation. Yes. Every fintech is an interesting client for every bank. Yes. In fact, some of the biggest clients that banks have today are fintechs. fintechs. So that's one major point of collaboration that is not going to end. Wow. Um, that's that's interesting. My 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 question is when you look at how fintechs have come to be, mm -hmm. right? And you look at the bank's mandate. You know which one of it is financial inclusion right at some point some fintechs that are saying you know we're here to improve financial inclusion mm -hmm. but when you look at the statistics right you know from the 80 percent in 2025 goal mm -hmm. that the cbn sent and where we are now we've not really hit that mark mm -hmm. right what do you think is you know standing as a barrier mm -hmm. you know to that financial inclusion to meeting that financial inclusion target mm -hmm. and how do you think fintechs or even banks and fintechs can work together to meet it. Yeah, I think the industry has made a lot of progress, okay. right? Um, I mean, so let's think of financial inclusion as giving people that don't have access to formal finance okay. access, right? The 
the first way to do it is by you know uh, placing what is agents today around them. Yes. Right? But those agents today mostly do cash in, cash out, right? Mm -hmm. Which means they also service people that have you know banks, uh, bank accounts. Yes. So the way to you know help drive this financial electrician, which is people that don't have access to formal finance, getting access is also going to be through these agents. Okay. For agents to be viable, they need to make money and keep their shops open. What is driving their transaction today is cash in, cash out. Mm -hmm. But they are also now layering account opening on the top of it. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of agents opening accounts and doing BVM for banks today. Mm -hmm. So I, I think where we can fast track this is for fintechs today who also focus on cash in cash out mm -hmm. to start opening accounts also right mm -hmm. and i think one of the major things is the commercial implication of it <laughs> mm -hmm. so if fintechs can see money in it the same way they see money in cash in cash out they will generally put attention on it or drive it further so the summary of what i'm saying of how we can you know fast track this or push it further is for fintechs to begin to think of new business models that can allow them to be able to see traction because you know it's a social goal but it also needs to be back with commercial yes. gains yes. and what generally allows enterprises to succeed is when you can do have commercial gains yes. for this mission so if fintechs can actually come up with business models that will allow them to be able to drive account opening wallet opening for all these excluded people it will generally also increase the industry and i think one way around that is the psb regulation yes that the central bank has issued yes. and i also think microfinance licenses are also ways to do that a microfinance license still needs a commercial bank mm -hmm. a psb however does not need a commercial bank mm -hmm. right so if it takes begin to go for some of those licenses mm -hmm. and begin to you know unlock new commercial models for example um, um, account opening revenue, card insurance revenue, okay. etc. Those are all things that you know can help fintechs come into that same space and drive it further together with the banks. Mm. That, that's interesting, but I can just imagine what the shareholders fund, like the capital they need to have. Exactly. You know, because many fintechs always start up as either bootstrapped startups mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and even if you're not bootstrapped, you're going to be using an investor's fund. So the, the investor needs to see you know, what's the time it take you to recover my money? Yes. So hmm, I feel like there's, there's still a lot of work that, you know, the industry needs to do to figure out what's the best way to move from yes. where we are um, to, to the next point. Yeah. Um, so I know like um, Timapt has an agency solution, mm -hmm. right? Can you speak a bit more about that and, you know, how you're using that to drive financial inclusion? Yeah. Uh, our agency solution is called Money Point. Okay. I will agree it's not as popular as the team Okay. But trust me, it's very popular. I, I believe we are the largest agency okay. banking solution provider in the country. How many agents locations? By value processed. Okay. Uh, we have circa 60,000 agents. Okay. Uh, we do above 50 million transactions in a month. Okay. Uh, 50 million transactions in a okay. month. And we process about 2.2 uh, .2 billion monthly. Naira or dollar? Dollar. Okay. <laughs> Monthly. Um, and we are growing also. Um, <laughs> so we we basically started the business in 20... Q2 of okay. 2019. Okay. And uh, we found early traction. Remember that our initial business was building solutions for banks. For banks US. Yes. So today we are present all over the country. Uh, we have services like cash in, cash out, bill payments, uh, airtime recharge. Uh, we're launching um, account opening also for in collaboration with some of our banks. Also, okay. we're launching that also. Uh, where we are taking this to is that beyond the underserved, we call underserved people that have bank accounts but poor access. Okay. Maybe ATMs are far from them. We need to capture the unbanked also because we, I think that's where the future is. Like I kept saying, the way to capture the unbanked is you need to find money in it. Okay. Let's be realistic. Yes. The moment a fintech unlocks a business model that can actually capture these guys and have commercials gain for it, watch traction. 
So I believe that we should be able to pioneer models that can actually capture with a cost of customer acquisition that is low enough such that the lifetime value that you get from that customer is above the CAC, customer acquisition cost. Yes. You are going to see a new traction and I will be very, very happy to announce to you some of these new things that we are going to be launching okay. uh, very soon okay. to capture some of these customers. Uh, we still think that 49% of Nigerians are still unbanked. Okay. I've seen some of these first hand uh, in the north, for example, in the south, for example, I've seen some of these things firsthand of how people have different needs. Uh, I, I see that there are kind of like three Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a Nigeria that is like us here. Yes. We're on Twitter. Yes. We use Piggy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a Nigeria of our parents. Right, and there's another masses of Nigerians that are like youths that okay. are not on Twitter. You see, that mass of Nigerians that are not on Twitter are not big, they're actually the largest set of Nigerians. Yeah. But most of the builders and uh, uh, movers of the financial service industry don't have a grip or a clue of this Nigerian mass. Yeah. We we how do you have a persona for Hamed who is a shoemaker mm -hmm. in Zaria mm -hmm. and makes about two thousand naira daily fixing people's shoes mm -hmm. and those two that two thousand naira today he kind of keeps it under his bed or maybe he, he uses like a an informal um, uh, what they call a dashi or a job collector. Okay, okay. We don't have proper products for these people. Okay. But if you look at Tina, mm -hmm. graduated from Covenant University, <laughs> Management Information Systems. <laughs> She's 27 years old. Yeah. She works in Safety Mart okay. as a business analyst. Okay. We have a proper definition for these people. Yes. Our parents also have a personal, but our parents have been captured by some of the banks. Yes. First Bank, yes. GTB, Zenith. Yes. But you see this underserved mass of Nigerians who are mostly youths and also middle-aged guys mm -hmm. who are also financially, they are not poor. They are not, some of them are not poor, they are not destitute. Mm -hmm. But their literacy level is not as high as for them to be able to be on Twitter. Yes. And they also don't have the same kind of formal accesses that we have. Yes. These guys have not been captured. Yes. So I think that uh, being able to build solutions mm -hmm. that will be able to uh you know personalize and commercially capture uh, commercially capture these people in a viable manner mm -hmm. is going to go a very long way let's assume we divide fintech into like six mm -hmm. right so there's payments lending mm -hmm. savings mm -hmm. insurance yes pension yes have i six <laughs> payment, yeah. payment mm -hmm. savings mm -hmm. lending insurance pensions and one other one um where have you seen the most um, fintech traction or the most fintech group right and why do you think some subs of that financial services is being um, excluded it's payments because payments is relatively easier depending on the kind of payments that you do and the kind of network effects or uh, the kind of modes that you have for your business payment business okay a payment gateway for example has the mode that your customers do a significant investment to connect to you. Mm. Uh, so switching cost is high. So switching cost is high. Mm -hmm. Like after I've integrated this API, before you go and mobilize your developers again to do integrate another API, you think about it twice. Yes. So that's a significant mode. Yeah. Um, and they also have their downsides also. Uh, the downsides also is is kind of correlated with the amount of how are you serving elephants, you're okay. serving gazelles, or you're serving mosquitoes, okay. right? If you're serving an elephant, if two elephants leave your yes, zoo, yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, messed up, right? Yes. If you're serving, uh, say, gazelles, for example, um, you also have a lot of gazelles to herd, right? Yes. But if one, two, three, four gazelle leaves your business, you probably will not notice it. Yes. So they all have their strengths and weaknesses, but clearly payments. Payments because the risk in payments is less. You don't have to deal with people's funds. Yes. You simply just have to be a pipe, a pass-through, and you take a commission for it. 
and how you need to drive this up is by adding more transactions to pass through your rails. Yes. So it's kind of easier. Okay. Uh, lending or risk assets generally is riskier a lot. <laughs> uh, a higher percentage of bank revenue comes from interest income. Yes. 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 So you are lending to big enterprises, big corporates who or you know more or less like elephants you know mm -hmm. higher risk but of course higher reward also so the lending that we know it on the fintech direction however today is the retail, retail lending, lending yeah. that is riskier it's riskier in the country currently because the country doesn't have a proper punishment methodology mm. uh, if if for example in more advanced countries you have a credit score yes. that a decline in your credit score to certain levels means your life is complicated yes nigeria doesn't have that and i think that's a problem of credit so the way our lenders are compensating today is by increasing interest rates to compensate for what they will imagine will be their default rates yes, yes. let's fast forward to the one with the least traction so payments lending then which one do you think people should be paying more attention to which one is um sidelined i think in short tech Yes. I think we should take a look at InsurTech. The problem with InsurTech is uh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's a problem because I don't want to hurt my religious folks. But a lot of us believe that God is our insurance, right? Uh, so we don't have this insurance culture. However, I have seen that legitimate use cases for health insurance. Okay. Right? I have seen that one of the problems that the mass markets have today is health the reason why they don't come to work in a day is maybe they are sick or one of their family members are sick i've seen this firsthand there's an opportunity for health insurance on a retail mass market level okay uh, uh yeah so i kind of think that in short tech focusing on health there's opportunity there okay okay yeah so yes thank you so much thank you so much Tosin. it's been an amazing time chatting with you and hearing about your future plans before i let you go mm -hmm. um we we'll play a short game okay are you ready yeah sure okay, okay so the game is simple i'll start a sentence mm -hmm. and you complete it mm -hmm. are you ready sure okay so tiger woods is to golf what steve jobs is to okay tiger wood is a player and uh, champion of golf okay steve jobs is a player and champion of consumer tech some mm. people might say apple right mm. but i kind of think it's consumer tech fair enough <laughs> yeah uh app store is to apple what play store is to app store is where apple apps are kept okay so play store is where google apps are kept i want to see how you do for the next question <laughs> <laughs> okay so nigeria is to africa what sydney is to Nigeria is to Africa. Nigeria is the capital. Oh, sorry, Nigeria is a country in Africa, one of the largest countries in Africa. Okay. Um, Sydney is one of the largest. I don't know if it's the largest, <laughs> but I know it's in Australia. So. Okay. So Australia. That's yeah. fine. I'll give it to you. Yeah. Um, the brain is to humans. What CPU is to? Uh, the brain is a CPU for humans. <laughs> The CP is the CP for computers. Yes. Thank you so much, Tosin. It's been an amazing time chatting with you today on the rise of fintechs and your future plans. Yeah, uh, it's a pleasure, Ben. Uh, it's always a pleasure chatting with you. I agree. I hope you <laughs> will give me some of your Twitter followers. Oh, all right. <laughs> I think about it. All right. Thank you, Ben. Uh, and also to the audience. Um, Timap is a wonderful place to work. Uh, we are building uh, financial services for the next billion people. Right. Uh, we have a lot of bunch of smart individuals, technical teams, product teams, marketing teams. If you were happy to join us, please go to our website, Timap slash career, and you'll have one of these swagware. Thank when you. Do I my own? Ah, sure. It's <laughs> <laughs> right, a pleasure. Easy, When it comes to insider exclusives with big tech giants in the tech ecosystem, we are your number one plug. My name is Benjamin and I'll see you next time.